In this video, we have a trough with a triangular cross section that is 5 meters high, 3 meters wide at the top, and it's filled up to 3 meters with water. And the density of the water we're given, and we want to know how much work is required to empty the trough through the top. Well, we're going to do this the way we've approached all the other ones, and that's by looking at a slice. So our slice is going to look something like this. And let's give it a thickness, whatever we want to call it. Uh, it's water, so let's say delta H. And we're going to be labeling variables as we go, and we'll label them in red so you can uh, see how they stick out. All right. First things first. If we want, we know we're going to want the work to move the ice slice. Well, to get the work, we need the force on the ice slice. To get the force, we need the mass on the ice slice. To get the mass, we need the volume of the ice slice. So let's start there. The volume of the ice slice. So if we look at its shape, it's a box with a thickness of delta H, and it's got a length of 8, and it's always 8. The one thing that's changing is right there, so we need to introduce a variable for that. Um, we can call it whatever we want. Maybe we call it B sub I for a base, because it's kind of like a base of a triangle in there. So we have our three dimensions, B sub I times 8 times delta H. I'm going to put the 8 out front, 8 times B sub I times delta H. What we should notice right away is we have two variables in there, B and H. So we want to see if we can establish a relationship between those two. If I look at my triangle sideways. Here's my slice. I've called that B sub I. And I know that this is 3 meters. And I know that the height is 5 meters. I'm going off the actual trough. I'm not worried about the, the water uh, dimensions right now. So we need another variable in here. And because we call this delta H, let's call this H sub I. So H sub I is this distance right here. It's the distance from the peak or the very bottom of our trough up to our slice. We should be able to see this similar triangle relationship now in the triangle we've drawn here. So 3 is to 5 as B sub I is to H sub I. We want this solved for B sub I, so we can substitute. So B sub I equals, I cross multiply the H sub I, 3 fifths H sub I. All right, so that was a little bit of scratch work. It's going to get this all in terms of one variable. So 8 times 3 fifths H sub I delta H, or 24 fifths H sub I delta H. We now have the volume of the ice slice. We need to turn that into a mass and then into a force. Those are actually pretty easy. The mass of the ice slice is just our density times the volume of the ice slice. So it's just our density times this. And then the force of the ice slice is just acceleration times our mass. So the mass of the ice slice times our acceleration. Well, our acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. So it's g times the mass of the ice slice. So right here, if we put in a delta, we'll have 24 fifths delta h sub i delta h. And here we'll have 24 fifths delta, delta g h sub i delta h. Now, you might get really good at these and be able to skip a lot of these steps, but I want you to see where everything's coming from. Also, realize that because what we're given is in kilograms per meters cubed and in meters, we needed to multiply by acceleration to turn it into a force because we found a mass. If these were in uh, pounds per foot cubed in feet, we would have gone straight from volume to a force by turning it into a weight. Just some things to point out. All right, we're almost there. What we need now is the work on the ith slice. So that ith slice right here, we need to figure out how far 
it's getting moved out to the top of the trough. So if I draw in a line that represents that distance, it would go from the slice up to the top. Now think about what we know. We know from here to here is h sub i. And if I draw it, I can actually put it on this drawing too if it makes it a little clearer. This line that I drew in is 5 minus h sub i, because we want to keep it in terms of h. This drawing gets a little cluttered after a while, as you can see. That's the distance. So it's force times distance, so it's f sub i times the distance, which we just said was 5 minus h sub i. And so putting this all together, I'm going to put the constants out front. 24 fifths delta g h times 5 minus h sub i, excuse me, we're still in the discrete case, delta h. We're ready for our integral. So the work is going to be, I'm going to pull all the constants out, 24 fifths delta g, because it turns out the integral itself is actually not so bad, h times 5 minus h dh. Now, let's think about our limits. Now remember what we're integrating over. Your first thought might be 0 to 5, and if it were a full tank, that'd be correct. We're only integrating over the water, and the water ranges as far as we described h from 0 to 3. Now to contrast this, you may have defined h to be from the top, and then you would have had to go from 2 to 5. So how you set up your diagram determines how your integrand and limits are going to look. So we have 24 fifths delta g, the integral from 0 to 3 of 5h minus h squared dh. Again, not a bad integral at all. So 24 fifths delta g. This is going to be 5h squared over 2 minus h cubed over 3 from 0 to 3. So 24 fifths delta g times, plugging 3 in, we get 9 times 5 is 45 halves. Plugging 3 in here, we get 3 cubed, which is 27, divided by 3 is 9. I'm going to write that as 18 halves just to be able to do our fractions. So we got 24 fifths delta g times 27 halves. Now this could go ahead and all get uh, multiplied together. So if we were to multiply that together, let's see what our final answer is going to look like. So putting all our numbers in. We have 24 divided by 5 times delta, which was 1,000, times g, which is going to be 9.8, times 27 halves. And there's our final answer, 635,000 and 40, and the units, because of what we're in, kilograms and meters, is going to be joules. Now, let's make one alteration in the problem. We're not going to redo everything, but I'm going to make one small alteration and just show you how the integral would change. Let's see how much work is required to empty the trough to a height 2 meters above the top. Okay, and let's see how that affects our drawing. So now we're trying to get up to here, which is 2 meters. If you notice what piece that affects, it doesn't affect our slice. We'd still take the same slice. Everything would still be the same up to the force on the eighth slice. Here is where our one difference would be, the work on the ith slice. So we'll do this in red so you can see the difference. The work on the ith slice is going to be the force on the ith slice times the distance of moving that. Well, we know from here to here, 
was 5 minus h sub i. And now we need to move that 2 meters further. So this is actually going to now be 7 minus h sub i. That's the only difference as far as our work on the i slice. So when we go to set up the integral for this one, it's going to be almost identical to what we had before. It's going to be the force on the i slice, which was 24 fifths delta g h. Now it's going to be 7 minus h dh. And lastly, our limits aren't going to change because the water hasn't changed. So it's still going to be 0 to 3. So this is one variation that you might see on this kind of problem is raising it to a level that's above the top of your tank. It only makes a small effect in setting up the work for the ice slice. Everything else was pretty much the same.